Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and the start of a brand new era for this channel. It's going to be a very brief era, but for the first time in quite a long time, I will be introducing a new backyard sports game within the scope of content for this channel, and that game is Backyard Basketball 2004. Now, I have a very long personal history with this game that dates back even further than when I started playing Backyard Baseball 2003. You see, when I was a kid, I was a huge NBA fan, much more so than the NFL and much more so than the MLB. In fact, I really did not care much for baseball at all. The fact that I enjoyed Backyard Baseball 2003 at all is kind of surprising because I almost never watched baseball, aside from, of course, the World Series. And so, for that reason, Backyard Basketball 2004 is actually the backyard sports game that I have put the most hours into in my lifetime and is the game that I have the most nostalgia for. So the question kind of becomes obvious. If I have so much personal history with this game and I have so much nostalgia for it, why have I not brought it out onto the channel before? And it's a really simple answer, actually. The game's too freaking easy. Maybe you've played this game before, maybe you've watched others play it on YouTube, but this game is simply broken and they really should have tweaked some things in testing it out before they released it to the market. There are two basic reasons why this game is broken. Reason A is three-point shooting and reason B is defense. The shooting function in this game is determined with this visual shot jump meter. You're supposed to time it at the correct time, not necessarily all the way full, but you know, right about to the top is when you want to release the ball for your shot. This is the same as with, you know, 2K with their shot meter, right? That goes green or, you know, makes a certain noise when you hit the right spot, so you're more likely to make the shot. But in Backyard Basketball 2004, I find this shot meter's significant to be a bit misleading because there are some players in this game that will make basically everything from three-point land. It does not matter if you release it quickly, it does not matter if you release it really long into the jump, they will make it nothing but net basically every single time. This game is basically 2010's Golden State Warriors simulator, but they made it in 2003. Somehow they predicted the future of NBA basketball. Even players with a middling outside shooting rating, and the ratings actually are broken down into inside shooting versus outside shooting, so players with even a you know middle of the road outside shooting rating can still make 75 to 80 percent of their three-pointers easily so all you got to do is just chuck up as many three-pointers as possible and you will defeat the cpu easily even on the hardest level of difficulty then the broken nature of outside shooting in this game is coupled with the broken nature of playing defense in fact even more broken than the outside shooting function is probably the steal function even players with a low defensive rating in this game can swipe the ball away from any other player basically at will. All you have to do to really stop the CPU in this game is take the ball away, chuck up as many threes as possible, and ensure that the CPU simply doesn't take as many shots as you do, and you will probably win by 30 or more points in every single game you play. Also, there is a third way that this game is totally broken, and it's that the game literally does not allow you to make bad players on purpose. What I mean is, the typical solution some of y'all might have, of, oh, well, just create a team with players who are 1 out of 10 and everything, and that'll just solve the problem of the game being broken in terms of defense and three-point shooting. No. I will have video playing right above me, right over here, where I try this out, and, you know, I try to create a player who's 1 out of 10 and everything. The game autofills the rest of the skill points for you. The game literally will not allow you to create a custom kid who sucks. It's like the game intentionally wants you to be good. The game does not want you to lose, ever. This game is suck proof. Get your mind out of the gutter. Any method that you could possibly come up with to try and make this game more difficult, it just doesn't work. I could elaborate a bit more on the intricacies of how this game works, but this is at the base level why I have never played a full season with any team in this game on this channel, because I think it would be boring. It is extremely likely that I would win every single game by a massive margin. Every single game would be very repetitive, more of the same, and I think most viewers just would not be interested. I certainly wouldn't be interested in making a series where I know know what's going to happen in basically every single game. That's why I loved the uh, Mighty Monsters series so much, where I intentionally created the worst possible team in Backyard Baseball 2003, because I 
didn't know what was going to happen in every single game, or I should say I actually knew what was going to happen and that every single game was going to be a huge challenge and I'd probably lose. I am more interested in creating that type of content where there's an actual challenge rather than, you know, going into a season knowing I'm going to win every single game by 50 points and my team is going to win the championship easily. Some people like watching that type of content. I personally don't like watching it and I don't like producing that type of content either. So for that reason, the Backyard Basketball 2004 videos that I'll be posting on this channel are short form. You know how sometimes I like to do little one-off videos or mini series in both Backyard Baseball 2003 and Backyard Football 2006. Like with Backyard Baseball, I have the theme team challenge. In Backyard Football 2006, I have position theme teams and the Super Bowl simulations. The Backyard Basketball videos that I'll be posting for the time being are similar to that little one-off videos, not building teams for any long-term type of videos because really that's all I think this game is worth in terms of content for this channel. Just short-term, nothing long-term. So I have already filmed the three videos that I will be posting, including this one that you're about to watch right now where I'm going to be playing with Dmitry Petrovich, hoping to shatter the all-time single game scoring record set by Wilt Chamberlain, which is 100 points in one game. Dmitry Petrovich is the most broken character in this game. He is 10 out of 10 at outside shooting, and he makes probably 95% of his three-pointers. This man hardly ever misses. This guy makes Stephen Curry look like a joke. In fact, I would go to say that Dmitry Petrovic in Backyard Basketball 2004 might be more broken than Pablo Sanchez is in Backyard Baseball 2003. Like, I'm actually serious. And I think when you guys are watching this video, you'll realize what I mean. Like, Pablo in Backyard Baseball 2003, great power hitter, honestly not that great on defense, whereas Dmitry Petrovic in Backyard Basketball, this guy is simply next level. This guy is honestly one of the most overpowered characters in any sports video game ever. But there is another reason why I'm filming this intro, which will probably turn into yet another signature 10 plus minute long intro to a video that probably doesn't need to be that long. And it's this. For the first time ever on either of my channels, I'm going to be looking into the camera and doing the traditional YouTuber apology. I messed up. As you will see in the three videos, including the one you're about to watch, every time I open up the game, I show y'all the difficulty settings and the game settings. And I believe I say in every single video, at least once, I will say something to the effect of, this is the most difficult way to play the game. Or I say, these are the hardest difficulty settings uh, to play this game. I say something similar to that, right? That's actually not true because I caught something or I should say I remembered something after I was already done filming these videos. Remember how I mentioned the shot meter and how it kind of plays into the super broken outside shooting function in this game? You can actually turn off the visual shot meter in this game. I completely forgot about that while I was filming these videos. And it's so irritating because I remember being able to do that when I was a kid and playing with the shot meter turned off as an extra visual challenge. In the same way that in my Backyard Baseball 2003 videos, I like to turn off the swing spot and pitch locator to add an extra layer of visual difficulty to the game, you can do basically the same thing in Backyard Basketball 2004. Now, when you turn off the swing spot and pitch locator, in Backyard Baseball 2003, does it change the way the CPU plays? Does it change the way your players play? Not necessarily. So does it make the game that much more difficult? Personally, I don't think so, especially once you get the hang of it, but it does add an extra layer of a visual challenge. So in that way, yes, I would say the game is harder with the swing spot and pitch locator turn off because you literally cannot see where the pitch is likely going to go, right? Thus, in similar fashion, when you turn off the shooting meter in Backyard Basketball 2004, you can't time your player's jumping animation as well as you could with the shot meter turned on. Now, of course, every single player actually has from what I can tell, almost an identical shooting animation. The only difference is the likelihood as to whether or not they will take an accurate shot, but it does still add that extra layer of visual difficulty. And unfortunately, I just forgot to make that adjustment while I was filming these videos. So after I was done filming, I actually played a couple of games with the shot meter turned off. And I have to say, at first, it was much more difficult. I was bricking some three-pointers left and right. At first, I played a game with Ronnie Dobbs and Tracy McGrady on my team, plus Dmitry Petrovic. I just had the CPU choose random players, and that's who they put in my starting lineup. And with Ronnie Dobbs, who is on the lower end of outside shooters, I only finished 6 of 17 with him 
with Trace McGrady, I finished 12 of 24. So rather than the usual 75 to 90% that you will shoot outside shooting with pretty much any player with the shot meter turned on, two of my players had a massive decrease in terms of their likelihood to make three pointers. Now, it must also be said that I still blew out my opponent. I beat them by like, I don't remember, like 60 or 70 points, and I was still 20 of 23 from downtown with Dmitry Petrovich. So he's so good that he is not impacted by turning off the shot meter. He's just a broken character. He's completely broken. But overall, my outside shooting performance did actually suffer when I turned off the shot meter. Then I played a second game with the shot meter turned off with a few players who weren't as good at outside shooting. I had Shaquille O'Neal on my team, one of the worst three-point shooters in the game. I had Kimmy Ekman, I had Stephanie Morgan, and a couple other players. And pretty much the same thing happened. I did get the hang of it after a while with a few of the players, but instead of shooting my usual, like I said, 80 to 90% from downtown collectively as a team, we shot between 50 to 60%. So in real life, making 50 to 60% of your three-pointers in one game as a team is still ridiculous but that is you know what like a 20 to 30 point drop in this game so that does actually impact how many shots are going in now i did also blow out the opponent in this game so similar to how turning off the pitch locator and swing spot in backyard baseball doesn't make the cpu any better turning off the shot and meter in backyard basketball 2004 doesn't make the cpu any better either and it also does not solve the broken steal function so you can still just as easily steal the ball from your opponent at will chuck up as many shots as possible and you'll still win easily the only difference is that you'll just make a slightly lower percentage of your shots so the game is still too easy but when i said in these videos this is the most difficult way to play the game i was unintentional intentionally not telling the truth. I just didn't realize it at the time and I, you know, want to be transparent and as real as possible to y'all. So I just felt the need to come in before this video and tell y'all, unfortunately, I was not actually playing the game on the hardest difficulty settings when I thought I was. So on that note, I will add these two addendums sort of to this introduction. For one thing, the two games that I played without the shot meter, I want to actually upload those to YouTube, probably gonna do it as a private or unlisted video that you can only get with the link. I will leave the direct link in the description because that will be the only way to watch the video. I'm not sure if you can leave comments on unlisted videos. Maybe you can, maybe test it out and see if you can say hi to me. But I want to upload those two games into one video, uncut, no edits, just so y'all can see how different the game plays without the shot meter turned on. And the second addendum is this. If y'all watch either of the three videos, including this one, and you say, you know what? I think this challenge would have been way more difficult without the shot meter turned on, you need to run it back and do it again. I will do it if there's overwhelming fan demand. So take that as a note as well. So with all that out of the way, I hope y'all enjoy this first Backyard Basketball 2004 mini series video. I really enjoyed filming these videos. I had so much fun. Like I said, this is the most nostalgic backyard sports game for me by quite a lot actually. So even though this game is just way too easy, it was super fun getting back into it and playing it again. I really did miss it a lot. So with that, let's get into this game trying to set the NBA single game scoring record with Dmitry Petrovich. Will I be able to do it? Or maybe the proper question is, how much will Dmitry defeat the record by? Let's see. All right, y'all, so here we are in Backyard Basketball 2004. Like I said, I am using an Xbox Windows controller. That is the only handicap I can come up with. So here are the options, game setup. So hard difficulty, three minute quarter length. You can actually go up to 12 minute quarter length i don't know why anybody would be insane enough to play 12 minute quarters in backyard basketball 2004 but if you want to do that there is the option to do that then i have fatigue on power ups of course on fouls and violations on and then out of bounds on so we are going to hop into a pickup game and one thing i do love about this game and this is so nostalgic for me uh, for one thing all the old uh, NBA logos, Seattle Supersonics, man. I will say if a presidential candidate ever ran on the platform of bringing back the Seattle Supersonics, they would win my vote in a heartbeat. Bring back the Sonics. But then of course you do have all the custom teams. Back in the day, I loved to use the Hyper Hot Doggers. I won a championship with that team back in the day. And these teams all have really cool jerseys and cool names like the 53 pointers as well so all sorts of really cool names and that is the one thing i would say the atari era backyard games have over the early humongous entertainment ones that the customization options are definitely way better 
in the Atari era games. So let's just choose the Hectic Hackers. I think uh, that's a pretty underrated name. And then we will be playing the Ravenous Rim Rattlers. So those will be the teams I am player one, of course, will be playing as the Hackers. And back in the day, Dabaguchi Arena was my favorite of the standard backyard stadiums that are the non-unlockables. So we'll go with that. So like I said, this team is going to be built entirely around Dimitri, the best outside shooter in this game. So we're going to choose Dimitri and then hit escape because no one else matters besides him. We're going to try and set the scoring record, an unbreakable scoring record with Dimitri. Let's get it done, baby. Also, as you can see right there, the Y button is the pause button. And that's really annoying because if you're just button mashing on the controller and you accidentally hit it, it just automatically pauses the game. So if that happens during this gameplay, that's why. I did not use a controller when I was growing up playing this game. So I'm still getting used to these controls. That's the only way I can handicap myself. So they got Pablo. And Amir. Amir is not very good in this game, actually. And Vicky. Vicky Kawaguchi. Very deadly outside shooter. We got Dimitri starting. And Paul Pierce. And T-Mac. T-Mac, in my opinion, is actually the best pro in this game. So who else do we have? So we also have Vince Carter and Jocinda Smith. They're not coming into this game. It's all about Dimitri. Feeding Dimitri the ball. And we start off. And we pull up from three. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. The most overpowered thing in the game is the steal function. And you can you can steal from pretty much anybody. Oh, see see right there. Like I said, it's just if you're button mashing, and that's and one. Great. Nice job, T Mac. Nice job. This game moves so quickly, I'm gonna have to make like very few edits as well. Uh, okay, so we're gonna kick it back out to Dimitri. Pull up from three. Automatic. Easy. <laughs> it's just so easy, bro. I love this game. Look, see, okay. Oh, okay, that's I was going to say, T-Mac pulling up a three, but we're going to get uh, some free shots, actually. And also, this, too, so easy, bro. This game is just... You don't even really have to try very hard to, like, shoot 80% from the field in this game. Pablo's pulling up. Ooh, somehow that turned into a block. Oh, because we, we have the swatter power-up. Got it. I was wondering how. And T-Mac swats away Vicky's layup. Let's get the ball back. Come on, man. Paul Pierce rejects Vicky. Get nothing done. And we foul her. Good foul, actually. Even though Vicky's going to make these shots. Okay, Dimitri. Take the ball up court. No one's guarding him. Swish. Too easy. Just way too easy. T-Mac dishing it to Dimitri. Swish. We actually got to pick up the pace. He's scoring a lot of points. He's got 12 already, but there we go. <laughs> look at the, Look how easy it is to steal the ball. Another one. Too easy, bro. 15 points. Dimitri just going to take it up the court. Let's try one from half court. Too easy. Chef Curry out here. Chef Curry who? Clay Thompson who? Swatted. Dimitri pull up from half court again. Drilled it. Ooh, he actually airballed that one. Interesting. Oh, did not mean to do that. <laughs> this game is so ridiculous, bro. I can't believe it. Let's try another half court shot. Too easy. It's just too freaking easy. Like, I'm so nostalgic for this game, but I think y'all are seeing why I would never play a full series in this game. It's just... It's just so ridiculous. It's fun, but it's just not good, you know, series content, if you know what I mean. Uh, but we're behind pace with Dimitri for sure. Being unfamiliar with the passing controls is definitely affecting how often I get Dimitri the ball. But there's another three there. I think he's up to, like, what, 24? Gonna get another one right here. Easy. There's just no defense in this game. No defense whatsoever. Well, there's defense right there. It's so easy to steal. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He's got 30 already? Whoa. Okay, yeah. So, Dimitri's got 30 points after one quarter. Look at that. We are 11 for 12 from downtown. Crazy. Shooting 91% from the field. I do wish you could run, like, set plays in this game, because you really can't. You kind of just got to wait for someone to be open and hope that a defender doesn't step in the way. Easy three. The amount of turnovers in this game is really insane. Easy. Ooh, he missed that one. Even Dimitri misses every now and then. Give me that ball. T-Mac's going to get one. 42 points. So, yeah, you, you guys see how easy it is to run up the score on teams, though. Like, this is why I'm never going to play a full series, because we're beating them by 30. We've only missed, like, two shots the entire game. Look at that. Automatic. It's just so easy. 
This is hard difficulty. This is what playing this game on hard difficulty is like. Half court. Pull up. Bang. Ooh, oh my gosh. T Mac just bullying Amir. <laughs> he just launched threes from just anywhere on the court. Paul Pierce. Easy. I'm getting everyone in on it now. Had the butter power up. Easy. I think I'm going to work Jocinda and, uh, ooh, bad foul there by T-Mac. I'm going to get Jocinda and Vince in here in the second half just so y'all can see them. They make everything from three-point land, too. Basically, everyone in this game can jack up threes and make at least half of them. Even the really bad three-point shooters like Shaq and Tim Duncan and Ernie Steele, they can still make probably about, like, 40 to 50% of their threes, which, you know in real life standards is insanely good. Like if you shoot over 40% from three point land in real life, you're insane. So the fact that even the worst shooters in this game can make like half their threes, it's insane. Look at that. Look how easy it is to just step in front and then just go to the three point line and just yank up a three. Easy swat, easy swat. Who cares if they have the power up? I'm just jacking up threes. 75 points already. Look at that. Take it right away. Give it to Dimitri. Easy. Bang. Look at that. It's like the ball is just like a magnet into his hands. Easy three. All these guys are going to have like 10 assists from feeding Dimitri. Pablo gets a three there. We get at least one more before half. Drill this one. 84 points. 10 seconds left. Can we get another one? Who we'll just have, we'll let Paul Pierce have this one. 87 points in the first half. 28 for 30 from the field. All three-pointers. What a game so far. We're going to rotate out Paul Pierce and Trace McGrady. Both finished with 9 points. T-Mac with 14 assists. Dimitri with 69 points in the first half alone. Making great pace so far. We're going to put Jacinda in at forward and Vince Carter in at guard. Starting off the second half, bang. 72 points. Easy steal. 75. <laughs> oh, I miss this game so much. I really do. It's just, it's such a fun game, but like, see, even Jacinda, bang, automatic. And the thing is, like, the CPU makes, like, most of their shots as well. Here's Vince Carter. The CPU also makes most of their shots, but they just can't keep up because they just can't steal the ball the same rate that the user can. Vince Carter to Dimitri. Easy. I didn't even realize we crossed 100 points. I think maybe I've crossed 200 a couple times. Same strategy, just jacking up threes. Never scored more than 300 in a game. I think 300 in three minute quarters would definitely be pushing it. It might be possible. But 200 is easily attainable. I don't think I'm going to get it here. I think if I was playing with keyboard and mouse, I'd be even better. But see, like I said, this is only maybe my third time playing this game with a controller instead of a keyboard and mouse, and I'm still, like, absolutely murdering the CPU on the top difficulty. With fouls on, with out-of-bounds on, with all of, you know, everything else turned on to make it more difficult, I'm still absolutely shredding them. Like, if there was a way to mod the game just to make... First two-pointer of the game for Dimitri, for the team, actually. Like, if there was a way to just make shooting more difficult or, or just you know make I, I wouldn't say make the cpu defense better because they already do actually steal the ball from you pretty easily or intercept your passes but just in terms of like if if the general field goal percentage of the game just went down meaning both user and cpu that alone would completely equalize the game and make it way more balanced all right dimitri already at 100 Dimitri has 101 points to two assists. What a stat line. So everything he, from here on out is just running up the score even more. But we already got it. So we're going to let Vince and uh, just send a shoot around a little bit in this quarter. But we already got it. After three quarters, Dimitri already eclipsed 100 points. We are winning by 99 points now. And now we're winning by over 100. I'm like Larry Bird in that three-point contest where he called his shot before it even went in. I just know almost everything is going to go in. I've shot like, what, 53 pointers in this game and only missed two or something? Like, if it was not only harder to shoot the ball, but if it wasn't as easy to steal, that would also change a lot of things as well. Because you, you literally just press the, the X button on defense, which is the steal button, 
and I, I think it might just be left click when you're playing with a mouse and like you just instantly knock the ball away or take the ball away. It's just too easy. I just realized we haven't gotten a single dunk power up in this entire game between either team, which is kind of weird. I wonder why that is. Like they have the uh, the alley oop power up, so I might let them do that so y'all can see the dunk animations if you haven't seen it already. But that's kind of surprising. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Vicky Kawaguchi on the alley oop from Pablo Sanchez. But uh, yeah, I don't know. That, that that's actually really weird. We haven't seen a single regular dunk power up appear at half court yet. Oh my gosh, just send it his body to mirror. 164 points. We're winning by 120. Another three. It's too late to get 200, but we can just continue. Oh my gosh, look at that. Vicky actually blocked me that time. Okay, one more for good measure. Come on, Dimitri, get open, get open. Like I said, there are just no set plays. You just gotta, you just kind of gotta run around. 176. That's probably it. Nope. We get one more here. <laughs> Gosh, it's so great. Uh, yeah, two seconds left. We're not going to get the ball back. But one more steal for good measure. And the Hectic Hackers beat the Ravenous Rim, Lat Ravenous Rim Rattlers. That's a tongue twister. 179 to 46 with Dimitri scoring 137 points. And just four assists. What a game. Awesome stuff. And so, yeah, guys, in a nutshell, if you're wondering, why don't you play Backyard Basketball 2004? Why don't you do a series with Backyard Basketball 2004? This is why. This right here is why. This game is just, it's fun. It's super fun, super nostalgic, but it's just too freaking easy. So, hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, my ridiculous stat line with Dimitri. Actually, let's look at the stats. Unlike Backyard Football 2006, you can look at the individual game stats. So, yeah, Dimitri finishing with 137 points. Vicky actually put up 28 for the Rim Rattlers. Uh, Vince Carter was the next highest with 18. He was the only other player on our team to finish with double digit points. In total, Dimitri was 46 of 49 from the field. And what's crazy is no other player on my team missed a shot. Vince Carter was 6 for 6. T Mac was 2 for 2. Paul Pierce was 3 for 3. Justinda Smith, 2 for 2. And I think T Mac was 3 for 3 from free throws. So Dimitri was literally the only player on my team who even missed a shot. Like, that's just how broken this freaking game is. And what's crazy also is that the Rim Rattlers shot over 50% from the field, almost 60%. They were 16 for 28. So even with the CPU making over half of their shots, I beat them by over 100 points. So like I said, this video in a nutshell, I hope is really fun for y'all to watch. But this is why I'm not going to do a series in this game unless there is just overwhelming screaming fan demand. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. For more Backyard Sports content, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe. See you guys next time.